what I would say to anybody listening is you've just got to start creating. Being creative is the thing that's going to change you from being stuck where you are right now to being successful with whatever it is that you're trying to be successful. That practice of creating is the thing that will make the difference. Hey, what's up, Branding Experts? Alec here, and welcome to On Branding Podcast. And today, my guest is Matthew Hugh. And Matthew is the founder and CEO of King of Video, which is a company that helps business owners create, launch, and monetize their YouTube channels. So he's also a speaker, author, and podcast host, and he shares his expertise and insights on video marketing, content creation, and personal branding. Hello, Matthew. Thanks for joining us today. Where is it? Delighted to be here. Thank you so much. So today we are going to talk about how to launch a YouTube channel, the importance of video marketing. So can we actually start with a simple question? What's the importance of video marketing? How do you see it playing a role in today's ability to market yourself and brand your business? It's funny because I attended a marketing conference yesterday and one of the things they said, which was news to me because I, I don't keep up to date with Google's SEO stuff, but they said, Google have got a new update coming out for search and it's going to be a generative update or something like that. Um, yeah. I should have got that wrong. And they said that video is going to be prioritized even more in the search result than it was before. And what I often tell people is they're getting started with their business and they want to be at the top of Google. Yes, of course, you can pay for it using some kind of service, some SEO service or that kind of thing. Or you can create video content and it's more likely to be at the top anyway. So if you've got a YouTube channel, most people, when they search for the answer for something, you will probably see that video is prioritized at the top. Yeah. So why would you not be creating video content if you know you can get in front of people in that way? I totally agree. And I signed up for this Google's new update. I forgot what it's called either, but there is like a big snippet on the first page of, of the search results. And also I noticed that they actually do prioritize YouTube videos. And so I run a blog and I've been running this blog for a couple of years and I started my YouTube channel just like a year ago, but I'm really bigger when it comes to blogging than YouTube. But what I realized recently is that yes, they do actually prioritize and it's easier to actually create video content and get uh, on top of search results than write long form articles these days, at least yeah. when it comes to my business and my niche. So yeah, video is extremely important. YouTube is like another search engine in its own. So it's extremely important to produce video content as well. Can you talk to us about some of the biggest problems? Because you help businesses and, and entrepreneurs start their own channel and, and manage their content creation. So can you talk to us about some of the biggest problems they come across when it comes to starting a new channel? Maybe planning the recording, setting up the studio, or planning the content creation and stuff like that. You've listed them very well there, kind of the common things. I, I think like what I try to do with people from the start is help them to be strategic and a lot of people will focus on the gear and they'll focus on their studio and all that kind of stuff and actually the main problem they have usually is that they're not creators they don't understand how the creative process works they don't know how to come up with ideas and so part of it is coaching them to understand idea generation same as you, you talked about your blog like it's the same thing, right? You just could be creating some kind of content. So I think the biggest problem first is understanding the type of content that you want to create. And then it's just actually going and doing it. And I, I saw a thing with a famous guy who did a big uh, Zoom call the other day. I can't remember his name now. It's been escaped me. But he talked about how it was a tube buddy video and it was like 10 tips on getting started on YouTube or whatever. And he said, the first thing you've got to do is create a video and forget everything else. If you don't create the video, no one will see it. That's a fact. So getting people to create content first without worrying about everything else is my biggest priority. And, and we're just changing. I've got a, a coaching program that's eight weeks long. We're changing that now to rather than focusing on teaching them how to plan, pair, create ideas, set up the channel, that stuff. I'm literally taking them step by step and, and giving them action straight away. And one of those actions is go and create your intro video now and then come back to me when you're done. Don't talk to me about gear. Don't talk to me about all the other things that are in your brain of, of why this might not work. Just go and create the video because when you create content, it starts something in your brain. The creative process starts and then all of a sudden you start to get more ideas. You change the way you feel about the content, all that kind of stuff. Creating video content in the first place is the biggest challenge for anyone, I think. So just getting started. Of course, you need to be strategic, uh, as you yeah. mentioned before, but just get 
getting started and just getting the ball rolling and then improving upon that and then implementing maybe some editing, maybe some effects, sound effects, maybe some editing tricks, stuff like that. You're That's always true. evolving, like your content yeah. is always evolving. I bet when you first started the blog and you started writing your blog content, if you went back a year afterwards and looked at it, you're like, oh, yeah. copywriting was really bad. That so was really bad. Yeah. it very well and you can understand why maybe those blog posts didn't get as much traction as the new ones do as, you, as your process has evolved. So it's the same with video and, and rather than thinking, going in with it and thinking, I need to be viral, I need to do these really professional, amazing videos, actually just go into it with an open mind and, and start creating content. Everything right. else will improve as you move forward. Right. And all, another thing with getting viral, it's really hard to get viral, but if you even, if you get lucky and if you go viral and you don't have a system and you don't have a plan, you're just going to go viral once and then you disappear. Like your channel dies basically because yeah. you don't have any, you don't have a plan on how to create content. So it actually can hurt you long term if you go viral at the beginning of, of your YouTube career, I would say. I saw somebody on TikTok actually that they went viral with a product and because they were not st strategic about it, you can do TikTok shop now and, and it says buy it and there's that hashtag at TikTok made me buy it. They went viral with something and somebody worked out if they'd have put in the link to the product with an affiliate code, how much money this person would have made and they didn't do it and it, it was tens of thousands of dollars that they lost by not doing it so that's the kind of strategy where you've got to be thinking yeah. about when I'm creating this, is it just for love and I don't care about the money or actually do I really want the money? Because with affiliate stuff, they don't lose anything. You don't lose anything by doing it, but it just means that you do get paid if you do happen to go viral. Yeah, strategy right. is important. No, that's a good example, definitely. So yeah, so be strategic. So th th the basics would be probably to figure out what performs well in your niche or your category. Try to figure out what are the, some of the most important keywords you, you would you would like to cover and, and then create content that are around those keywords words and uh, and then grow from there right uh, and then you can focus more on thumbnails the on intros and maybe adding some music sound effects maybe hiring yeah. a, a, a better editor and stuff like that and then getting a better camera and stuff like that yeah these days we have these really powerful phones that you can just start with your iphone basically it's really good you get some maybe some light because it's important maybe some microphone but you can use just basic iphone and, and that's yeah. it and that's why i encourage people to use when they're getting started a lot of people will say to me what's the best webcam and i always say all webcams are bad because mainly because your mobile phone is probably a better camera than the webcam that you've got as long as it's relatively new in the last couple of years you're going to have a 4k camera on your mobile phone so why would you need to upgrade or do anything else right now i know people that have got 100 000 subscribers and they only use their mobile phone they don't use any other fancy equipment so there's nothing right. stopping you from an equipment point of view right and uh, yeah and it's also fast because you, you have the recordings here you don't have to like um, mess around with sd cards and things like that and all this equipment if you want to use dslr then you need to perhaps install the o obs and, and stuff like that yeah there is it's, so many things that go into that but that can come later once you get some traction and once you start figuring this stuff out yeah that's extremely important so that's about starting and then can we talk about some of the tools or resources that you use or you recommend your clients to use for video production and then editing and stuff like that so you're talking about software when you say tools yeah yeah, yeah. i commented as we came into this because you're using squadcast here i always think about the easiest and quickest way to do things so i use a mac easiest and quickest way to do it for me on a mac is using ecamm i love ecamm it's like a professional studio you can use it to do professional recording just as much as you can a really simple recording you can do interviews you can do multicast and all that kind of stuff if you've not got a mac and you want to do it in the browser then i use restream restream for me i know there's other alternatives like Streamyard. Restream, I find, has the best quality and it's a really simple studio to use in the browser. It has nice integration with Descript as well, which again, Squadcast being bought by Descript. Really great for your workflow to be able to film something in Restream, send it to Descript or film it in Squadcast and send it to Descript and then just continue the editing process because it's all cloud-based away you go. Yeah, they're probably yeah. the key things. And then in terms of YouTube management, things like vidIQ and TubeBuddy, great applications to get started when you're thinking about your analytics, your SEO, your keywords, all that kind of good stuff. A and B testing for thumbnails. Um, and that was my next question, actually. How do you go about measuring the video performance? Do you use anything like, what's it called? There's uh, TubeBuddy and software like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people talk about metrics being 
being vanity metrics, right? And they say, especially when you get started, it's don't be disheartened by the vanity metrics being your subscribers and your viewers. There are some really key metrics, your average view duration, click through rate, some of these metrics that YouTube Studio, not any other tools, just YouTube Studio in the background of your channel. These are the things that will tell you whether what you're doing now is working. So pay attention to that stuff like YouTube gives you all of the information you need to understand your audience, understand how the algorithm is working with or against you as it may be, and what you need to improve. If you see your click-through rate is really low, then you know that you need to improve the title or the thumbnail, most likely the thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, maybe the next video that you do, get two alternative thumbnails, use TubeBuddy, I think it's in the pro version, and you can have an A-B test and it will swap that thumbnail every day to tell you which one is the best. And paying attention to these metrics, understanding what they mean and, and knowing how to change them iteratively means you're going to get positive gains over time. I did this with one of my clients was a mass tutor and he, he was getting about a hundred views. He said between 80 and a hundred views to his videos, this particular video he had per day. And I said to him, I looked at it and we did a channel review and everything. And I looked at the thumbnail and I said, look, this thumbnail is really busy. It's a little bit confusing. I said, when we search for it, what we do is we search in the search results and see what it's up again, which one you're more likely to click. So I got him to change that and he changed a couple of his other channel thumbnails and he had a 25% increase. And he came to me the next day and he says, Matt, uh, next week, he said, Matt, uh, I went from 80 to a sort of 120 views. It's not a very good increase. And I was like, look, mate, we've just done it by 25%. Like, this is huge. If you can get yeah. a 25% increase every time, uh, yeah. the compounding impact of that is huge. So really pay attention to percentage increases. Think about that over, oh, I'm only getting 50 views right now. Because of course, Mr. Beast only got 50 views in his first videos. That's how it works. He just kept changing and improving over time. There is tools like TubeBuddy and VidIQ as well. Yeah, there are many tools. And for example, we are using now Squadcast. Before that, uh, I've been using Riverside. I started on Zoom, but Zoom is not really good for that. The difference for, for you guys who don't know is that Zoom like records the video. How to explain that right, right now? It just whatever. compresses the crap out of the video. Yeah. It's yeah. horrendous what it does to the quality of your video, yeah. Exactly. So whatever connection you have, if th there might be some glitches, you may lose some quality and, and stuff like that. But Riverside and Squadcast and other tools can record video and audio locally, and then they send it to the cloud. So yeah. now this video and audio is being recorded locally, so it's not dependent on the internet connection. So that's the difference. And there are so many tools out there, but th these are the tools that I'm using now. And I know you are using, we've talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, and just think about the purpose of Zoom as well. Like Zoom is a conferencing tool and a corporate conferencing tool first. And so when you think about a tool like that, the purpose of that tool is to maintain a good audio or visual connection. It's not to give you the best quality. It's just to maintain a connection because you, they don't want you to drop out of the call. With things right. like Riverside, Discord, Squadcast, uh, Restream, the purpose of that is to broadcast. So they don't want to just maintain the connection. They want to give you the best quality at the time of recording and cast and Riverside. Having that local recording just means that you get the best possible quality because the internet connection, the call we're having now, is just an addition to the local recording that's happening. Right. So that's the beauty of these tools. I think they're amazing. Yeah, they are. They are definitely are. And, and what do you think are some of the future trends and, and opportunities for video marketing? We all know that YouTube Shorts are are big these days, Instagram Reels, you can repurpose them as Instagram Reels, right? Or as TikToks and, and stuff like that. So some of the creators go shorts first, right? So they create very short form content yeah. and rather than focusing on long term landscape video, they focus on portrait mode, short form content. And now we have also AI and we can like deep fake ourselves what, what do you think about all of that where, where is it going to me so one change that's happened quite recently I, I went to vid summit last year in october and they said it was coming i've noticed it's there here now is that you can create a youtube short and then you can link to a longer form piece of content from that youtube short so i think represents a huge opportunity so at the time in october last year they just started to monetize shorts so you actually got a revenue share which was great they moved from having a fund to an actual uh, revenue share which is good and then that move to being able to link to your long form content means that you can clip a short part of your longer form content and then 
the audience should naturally organically move over as you link to that longer form piece of content. Like that's a huge opportunity because if you're a shorts creator now, if you're a short form creator on any of the platforms and you really want to maximize the income that you get from this, being able to link to a longer form piece of content where there's a lot of money in that long form piece of content, th this is going to change the game really. And I, I think if you look at it, when you get paid on YouTube, you get paid for every thousand views that you get. And on shorts, it's like tens of thousands. Like you need to get like 10 million views before you get a good amount of money from it. So the opportunity again, financially is much better on the longer form piece of content. And that integration between the two is going to be a huge difference to a lot of creators, I think. So in general, that's a good strategy. For example, like this podcast or, or podcasting in general, like we see like Andrew Tate, for example, his strategy is to go on as many podcasts as he can talk a, a lot of controversial, a lot of controversial stuff so they can clip him uh, because that performs well. And then, and then you can w w watch the long form video, right? The, the full yeah, interview. Yeah. So that, that's a strategy. So that's about podcasting, doing interviews, but you can apply the same to content creation. So if you want to create long form content about any subject like some evergreen keywords for example this is how i started and videos from two years ago or three years ago people still watch them right and then you yeah. can clip these videos and you can create shorts out of these videos and then you can link back to that long form video so that's a good strategy as well yeah and um, you don't know when it's going to take off like i spoke to the the maths tutor i was speaking to on my program at the moment and he said he had this uh, video that he did of a calculator and it got no views for the first six months and then suddenly just took off and if you look at a short form strategy, although you short form, you get quick hits and you get the, the dopamine hit quite quickly because you're getting more views. Actually, the longevity of the short form content is generally not as long form content. So to find a video on short form, if it didn't do very well, it, you're unlikely to discover it in six months later. But with long form, it can be discovered six months later and take off. Uh, and that's the beauty of it, really. My most popular video on my channel only took off during lockdown and it was like a year and a half old by that point, I think. Yeah. I, I've seen that with my videos as well. So that's a good point as well. That's a great distinction. What's the difference between short form and long form? In long form, if you target evergreen keywords that people will always search for, y you can create a video now. Maybe it doesn't take off now, but it will in, in the future, but it, it may not apply to short form content because either it takes off now or probably gets buried. Do you have any other tips, anything else you want people to know? We're going to link to your website, which is King of Video, that CEO that at UK. Yeah, Are you active right, yeah. on other social media? Yeah, in so if you type in link stop king of video .co uk there's a, a bunch of links on there. I've got a free okay. YouTube community. So if you're interested in getting started in YouTube, that YouTube community is a great place to, to come and hang out with a load of other creators or people that are thinking about creating. Definitely not just people that are already creating. We're doing investment events. We're starting to do those next month. Um, but yeah, they're the main links. I think what I would say to anybody listening is you've just got to stop creating. Being creative is the thing that's going to change you from being stuck where you are right now to being successful with whatever it is that you're trying to be successful. That practice of creating is the thing that will make the difference. And if you're looking at people that are getting millions of views, it's because they started creating three years ago and you're yeah. seeing the three year results of that effort and, and all those disappointing 50 view videos or on TikTok 200 view videos. They all went through that and it doesn't happen overnight. That's a great tip. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to link to your no website. Say we're going to link to the community so for you guys to check it out and Matthew shares a lot of tips there for you guys you can find more tips there thank you again thanks so much bye bye